I spend a lot of time talking to health systems and health plans and um, physician groups around the country. And you know, most of the time when I talk, it's a real downer. I mean, people are upset about the federal health care reform law. They're upset about the fact that it looks like there'll be less money for hospitals, less money for doctors. And then the ACO, Accountable Care Organization regulations, came out. They're really complicated and hard to understand. So I was thrilled when CPM asked me, could you give an upbeat talk? So I want to talk about optimism and why there's still a lot of reason to be optimistic about the future of health care, the future of medical practice. There's only one little thing I worry about a little bit, and that's cultural change, is that doctors and hospitals have not been the most open to changing the way they do things. And I think they're going to have to if they're going to be able to leverage all of the neat things that come with data analysis, with social media, and with the new way of doing things. Hospitals should be incredibly optimistic about the future because people are still going to get sick. And if hospitals can become the trusted voice, the trusted authority on these social media, on cell phone applications, on the new world of medicine, then hospitals have a wonderful opportunity to continue to be a really important part of their community. Um, one is cell phone and cell phone apps. There's over 10,000 applications that are applicable to health and wellness right now. And do doctors know how to use them? Do patients know how to use them? I don't think so. So one is cell phone apps. The second is captology. And captology is a new word, which means computers as persuasive technology. And really, I think a big change is going to be how people and computers interact um, in the future of healthcare. And the last is computer simulation. I think computer simulation is going to really change the way we look at evidence-based medicine, the way that we use um, guidelines, and it's going to be very exciting. So those are the three things, cell phone applications and how doctors and patients should be using those together to manage chronic diseases, captology, computers as persuasive technology, and last but not least, computer simulation to change the way that evidence-based medicine guidelines are created. So it's really an exciting time to be in healthcare. Mobile health is going to be the killer app that changes everything. I mean, in the think about it, in the past we brought the patient to the doctor in the hospital. I think care is going to migrate out of the hospital into the home. And it's going to be wherever you are with your cell phone. And I really think it's going to be a killer app. And we're just starting to think about how does that change things. Let me give you one example. If you have a, a problem and can't um, digest glutens, so you have a celiac disease, Think about it. Now, with augmented reality, you can take your cell phone, you can take a picture of the barcode of the new uh, pasta dish you're trying to buy, and it can immediately tell you whether it's good or not. I mean, you don't have to call your doctor. It's amazing. So augmented reality, by being a mashup that gets you to all the information that's on the web, wherever you are with your cell phone, think about it. That's just-in-time medicine. I mean, it's going to be really different. But... Doctors have to change, patients have to change, hospitals have to change, health plans have to change to have coverage in different ways. That's why you have so much anxiety and chaos right now, is because the changes are enormous. And we've got to stop being worried about it and put our heads together and figure out how to leverage those changes to take better care of people. Just do it. I mean, when I started out on Twitter, I had no idea what I was doing. When I started out with my flip camera interviews, I had no idea what I was doing. But they're easy enough to just do. And the second big thing in the article that we emphasized was we don't think social media should be just located in marketing or located in IT. We think everybody has to get involved in social media, from the CEO to the janitor. So ideally, we'd like to have... Um, a flexible social media policy that allows all of your best thought leaders in your organization to get stuff out there on Twitter, on Facebook, and on blogs. You've got to be careful to make sure you embrace social media, that you embrace captology, that you embrace cell phones, that you embrace data. There's so much more we can do with data, have data-driven decisions. But if you just keep doing things the old way, then I think you might slip behind.